to what role does the diaspora have to play? Because we're all here. <coughs> what are we doing to counteract this negative imagery? What are we doing? Or how can we do what we're doing better? That's, that's a difficult one because you've got to understand, you know, if, if, if you, you, you've got to understand where the Western media is, is coming from in terms of the history of, of representation dynamics of, of, of representation, that, 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 that there are attitudes. Uh, now those things stem from attitudes and ways of seeing and presenting, you know, that, 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 that predate even the rise you know, and the corporatization of global media. You know, it, 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 it's, um, it's a fun. Sometimes Diablo would prefer to present it uh, as a 400 year uh, in, the, in the book, you know, if you read that book, uh, the, the, the Africa That Never Was, was the title of that book. It's one of the books I use for my graduate seminars. And the subtitle says, uh, 400 years of British writing about Africa. The Africa That Never Was, 400 years and it's one of the most documented in terms of its archaeological strength and its archive. It's one of the most documented uh, books I have, I have ever read, you know, where, uh, where you, you encounter fragments of diaries, you know, by people actually traveling and writing diaries and representing, you know, and claiming that, you know, they met Africans with three heads and two tails, you know, human beings and all that. And, and so it's, 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 it's a very, and, and although that book puts it at 400 years, the growth of this tradition, that's just the modern phase of it, right? That's just the modern phase of it. And, and, and so it, I don't think that there's any kind of showcase whether by Western institutions and structures or even diasporic communities, you know, that uh, their, their efforts. Oh, look, when I first started teaching knowledge, uh, this was back in the States, I started teaching Nollywood poems. I, I would watch almost a hundred of those movies in order to be able to carefully select maybe just five that I wanted to <laughs> change because I wanted to pre present a certain uh, the Africa of neon and gloss and fast moving cars and iPhones and you know present a totally different very carefully selected movies after two of those movies that we taught in class this was two, I was still in the States then teaching at Penn State one student wrote and said he was dropping my post. And would I be interested in knowing why he was dropping? <laughs> uh, I said, and I said, sure, you know, uh, come. And if you've been watching Nollywood, if, if, if they, you, you know, if those, some of those movies are set in Abuja, Abuja, Nigeria, and I do tell people that if you take, if you take electricity, constant electricity and constant water supply out of it. Abuja is more imposing, more beautiful than Ottawa. It's, 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 it's a postmodern city built in Nigeria with oil money. And we've got that oil money. It's a very beautiful city. And when they set some of these movies in it, you think you're in down, downtown Manhattan. That's, that's Abuja in Nigeria. You know, and that's it for you. And there, 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 there are palatial mansions, you know, uh, that the, that the average Canadian will only ever get to see in movies, never see in real life, you know, just there in, in Abuja. So that's, that's another Africa. And this guy comes to my office and said, look, your course description says we are going to be seeing Africa through movies. And I come to your class and look at what you are showing us and calling Africa. So I'm not getting 
Africa from this class. And that's why I'm dropping. And I said, if, if you wanted to get the Africa you thought I was going to teach, why did you think you needed to register for my class? Watch TV. That's all you get in on TV. You know, go and see Discovery Channel and all that. And they will show you the Africa of, of the Serengeti with, with, with Maasai herdsmen all over the place. That's what you think I was going to teach. No. Nollywood, that's also Africa. And that's, so, how do you... Well, every effort is a, is a drop in the ocean, you know, but it's, it's always... It's always some... Um, I, I don't think that individuals and organizations, again, that's the inescapable. I don't even think that diplomats, countering stories can do that. The states, it's the performance, it's the performance of the African state. We, the, the continent got a huge lift, you know, from, from the way that, that South Africa organized the World Cup, because there was a lot of racist representation of ah, this World Cup is going to Africa. You know, if you if you carefully monitored the media, you know, yeah, yeah especially the bloody British media, there was so much in the build up to, to the because of, you know I, I, I tried to read at least four or five British newspapers every day. And in the build up to the World Cup, uh, you know, uh, players down there. In, you would think that they've never been to Johannesburg to know that it's exa exactly like London, you know. But the idea of Africa superimposed itself on the modernity of South Africa that they didn't even think that it's exactly like it. Oh, the work of in Africa, and we are not too sure that these people can pull it off. And, and look at the sort of bounce. That so it's, it's, it's the performance of the African state and African government that can, by and large, uh, do it. Yeah. And this there are the very many other things that you mentioned in the negative, so to say. And thereafter, in your other explanation, you mentioned the mega city, the uh, modern city of Abuja, mm -hmm. which I believe was not in your script. If the script was to pass the media, for example, mm -hmm. what picture do you want them to get of Africa? I was critiquing as a critique of the exclusivist focus on those areas that are said to be African and they are sensationalized beyond. Uh, I was critiquing the discourse, a certain aspect of the discourse of development that needs and feeds on that kind of imagery. That's, that's, that's what that's what I was doing. You know, I was precisely criticizing that that uh, the, the focus is either to uh, to win, and, and sometimes um, do you know that in the, what's this journalist's name? One journalist who took one such picture, you know, a Pulitzer picture, and later committed suicide. In 19, what, what, what was those famous yeah, pictures that came, he's an American journalist that came to emblem, that, that represented Africa for almost, that, that, that Africa got reduced to for almost throughout the 1990s. There's this child with, who looks every picture of what I described, distended belly and everything. This baby is dying. It's going to die in about two minutes, you know, but the, you know, literally naked in the field of, of southern Sudan, right? And there's the there's a vulture waiting. already waiting to pounce <coughs> on the course of this guy, right? And this American journalist is there watching, you know, from a distance. Oh, I'm going to get this shot. This will be. And then the baby dies. Vulture, he, he gets his shot anyway. He gets, he gets the shot of the vulture waiting and the baby about to die, and the shot of the, of, of the thereafter. And, and the picture wins the Pulitzer Prize. And then he realized, oh my God, I, should, I could have saved his baby. 
Yes, because the baby was crawling to the food's place. Yeah, I couldn't make it. The baby couldn't do it. was not going to make it. 